Hello and welcome to my art tutorials. This time around we'll be making modular walls. There's a lot to cover so let's get started. Over on Maya, open the script editor and copy over this script I posted in the description of this video. It's over on GitHub. With the script copied you can press play or you can select the whole script and middle mouse drag over to the shelf. With this script, you can click to set the Maya grid to Unity meters, or you can click reference to get a reference of the base character on Unity. I'm going to start with a basic cube. I'll go into inputs, polycube, and I'll change the divisions so I can get some geometry in there to push around. I could also use insert edge loop tool, but I'll just do this since it's more practical. I will delete the side of the wall since I want this to connect to others. And I'll also delete the back part so I'll mirror later. Afterwards, I'm going to use the D key and the V key to move the pivot to the center bottom of the object and I'll use the X key to snap the whole object back into the center of the grid. Then I'm going to move things around to shape my wall. Once the wall has the shape I want, I'll duplicate it with Ctrl D and snap it around with X to check if it's modular. Then I'm going to start doing the UVs for the wall. Select the edges, then use the Move and Sew tool to sew the edges together. Then you can use the Align tools to align the selected UVs. Then select the Unfold tool and click and drag and unfold to unfold the UVs. Afterwards, scale it down and Organize again the UVs with the Align tool. Go to Polygons and UV Snapshot. Select the name for the file and the place where you want it to go. Select the file to be a PNG. Then enter the desired size. In this case, I want this to be a taller kind of image, not a square image. I'm gonna now open the UV in Photoshop. And this process is kind of familiar to you if you have watched that previous tutorial I did. I'll even flatten the image from the old tutorial and I'll bring it over to use the same colors. I'll use the eyedropper to pick up the colors from the floor. The process is going to be very similar to the floor, but it's a little different since I'm only doing one kind of tile, I can actually reuse the tiles more. Here you'll see me using the transform tool to modify the size of the tiles. Right now I'm using the Select Path tool to select some paths and Ctrl C, Ctrl V them to copy. Then I'll move these paths over. In the places where the wall goes diagonally, I will make a little bit different kind of tiles, just to have some differentiation. To have some more variation in the tiles, since I'm using the same ones, I'll use Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal or sometimes Flip Vertical with the tiles selected. For the tops I'm only using a few rectangles with different colors going from darker to lighter. Ok, let's bring this back to Maya, go into the Attribute Editor, we we'll plug this into the material into the color. We're going to shade the display and lighting, flat lighting, so you can see just the texture without any shading. Okay, now we can do the shadows in the bottom right of the tiles. Sometimes I'll just do a whole line at once, then I'll go back and close the line.
Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna use the ruler to make sure everything's styling perfectly, or as good as it can. Gonna change a little bit so it styles even better. Yep, that's good. Just being it picky here. And I'm gonna start doing the lighter side to the left. Then I'm gonna do the lighter part on the top. Okay, by now things are looking pretty good, but I still want to add some more variation, so I'll go into curves with selection. I'll change the curves a little bit, so the diagonal parts are kind of darker. I'll do the same thing to the other diagonal parts. To have some differentiation between the parts of the wall. I can actually click my mask and just alt backspace to paint there. I don't need to create a new mask for each curve. I'll select the whole bottom part and I'll do the same thing with the curves, just bring it down. You can see over here, the wall looks a little bit different, so it's not like a flat wall of the same. One thing I like to do is I select a few tiles and I add some curves to them. So some tiles are darker than others, some tiles are lighter than others. You can actually later add some more tiles to it by selecting them, going to that mask and alt backspacing to paint there. You can click on the mask with the alt button to actually see the mask. You can control click the original shape, then alt click the mask and you can use select inverse and delete everything that's outside so the mask will only be affecting tiles. Okay, so now I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna create a clipping mask, so I'm only affecting the shapes of the tiles. I'm gonna turn my opacity down on my brush and I'm gonna paint with a lighter color to make these tiles pop out a little bit. Just a few brush strokes on each spot. You can already see a huge difference when you turn it off and on. Okay, that already looks better. But we can see some tiling on the sides, at least on a few tiles. I'll select everything, I'll merge it, I'll put it to the top. I'm gonna go into select all. I'm gonna use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy it over so I'll only have the parts in the middle. You see, nothing else. So I can use the filter, fill other offset. I can move it around on the tiling so I can actually see in the middle there the tiles that need adjusting. And I'll paint over this tile specifically. You can alt-click a color to pick it up without going to the color picker. Then you can just paint over using that color until it looks good. So make sure everything's looking nice. You can do some curve adjustments. 
see if it can get a little bit better coloring. You can also use hue and saturation. Just play around with it until it looks the way you want. Okay, once you're happy with it, let's go into mesh, mirror geometry, and mirror it to the minus x. You can see red there is x, so you want it to go to minus x. Then you have both sides of the wall. Now you snap it around and you have a modeler wall, but you don't have anything for the corner there. So you want to duplicate it, move it to the corner, adjust it, and we're going to create a corner wall. First we're going to pick up those vertices, we're going to go into the top view, we're going to move those vertices around, so over where the two walls meet. We're going to move those two too. I'm going to snap them later, but right now I just want to put them in the right ballpark. For these ones, I want to go into the Move tool and unmark Retain Component Spacing, so I can just snap them there and they'll lose their spacing, they'll all be on the grid. I'll put it there. I'll snap those later. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So I can create the inner part of the wall, of the curved wall. I'll snap this here. Okay, so this is looking mostly good, but I still have some parts right there that I need to snap to to actually close this corner well. Just click them using the V, move them with the V pressed to snap to vertice, so you can actually close those. Ok, these corners are tricky. First I'm using the Merge Vertex tool to merge those two to one point, then I put it there, but it's not quite so good because now it's not straight, it's over the wall and that's not what I want, so I'm gonna go back there and fix it later. I now wanna fix this inner connection between the walls, so I'm gonna go into the transparency mode. vertex and I'm gonna move some of these vertex around, snapping them wherever needed. These two will actually connect them together. Yep, there. The same thing there, the bottom. This is not needed so I'll just delete it. If I can manage to select it. <laughs> there. Okay, that's better. I'll click Isolate Selected, so I can see only that wall without seeing the other ones. Okay, so right now I have two problems with this corner. One of them is this stretch TV that looks quite ugly. And the other one is on the top, where I left it hanging over a little bit. So I'll just fix this first, I'll snap this vertex to the other ones using the V key. Before fixing the UV, let's check if this is connecting properly. And it's not, there's a little gap there. Make sure everything is connecting by putting two walls, one on each side, and moving it around to see if it's actually connecting to them properly. And now the wall seems perfect. Okay, for the UVs, let's pick those up. Select them, go into the UV Texture Editor to UV, so you can actually select the UVs you want, and let's scale them down. That looks nice, but let's move a little bit. Yep, that seems about right. Okay, let's plug it in. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's good. The way I'm gonna use it, nobody's gonna notice anything. You could also use just like a darker color there, so it would be like a connection actually. Okay, the connection wall is ready, so I'm gonna save this. Another thing I like to do with this kind of wall is putting four of them together to create a kind of column. I like to place those around the level. Okay, now I'm gonna use the mesh combine, combine those together. I want these pivot points to be into the middle and the center, so I'm gonna go into modify center pivots, 
with the GNV keys, I'm gonna put this down. Okay, so I'm gonna put this wall over here and use the mesh tool, insert edge loop tool, insert an edge loop here, because it's also nice to have a wall that's not entirely diagonal to connect. So I'm gonna pull this out, trying to make a more square connection. If this is a cave wall, we'll do it more rounded, but this kind of wall, I guess, squarish one is a nice one. Bring this back to the center. Okay, you can use the V tool there to snap to vertices. Okay, it's nice. Oh, pull this inside, wait. Okay, now the UVs look all stretched, but we can fix that. Okay, so first I thought of putting the pivot points to the side there and do this, but I guess it's just easier to make it sure it covers both sides of that UV chart. That way I know it will tile perfectly. And we have all our walls. And this is our end result. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. This time it was a little bit longer and I had to speed up through some things. So if you have any questions or you didn't catch something I did, just let me know in the comments. If lots of people have questions, I'll just make a new video, a bonus video to answer it. I'm really happy with the comments you guys left in the last tutorial, so keep them coming. It's really nice to know that tutorials are being appreciated. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, you should check out Itiski's Kickstarter. He's kickstarting a series of tutorials covering how to make games in Unity from start to finish. He's a great tutorial maker, you should also check out his channel, he has lots and lots of tutorials. And I really hope he can get the support he needs to make this project come true. If you haven't already, also please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. I'll see you guys next Tuesday, I'll be doing a tutorial on some decoration assets for our dungeon. And that's it, I'll see you guys next Tuesday.